Hello, good evening, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth for evening prayer, common worship, daily prayer, evening prayer on Saturday with a lesser festival material from Mary, Martha and Lazarus thrown in, 6 o'clock, Saturday the 29th of July. You'll find the words at the Church of England's website, Aremus Daily Prayer, downloadable as app for Apple or Android device. You may join me by Zoom once I've restarted my computer and it's uh, allowed me to fire it up. Uh, by uh, Facebook, we're live streaming on Facebook by the Valley Church's um, Facebook page. Uh, you'll find the codes there and on our website for the Zoom meeting. And uh, the audio will appear on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel presently once I've uh, stitched it onto an image and uh, uploaded it. You're welcome to join the building to 8 and 6 most days. Just uh, opening Zoom. Waiting for it to open the meeting schedule. Clicking on even prayer. And it is now starting. Let's pray. O God, make speed to save us, O Lord, make haste to help us. A song of God's light, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom then shall I be afraid? Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not be afraid. And though there rise up war against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, and that alone I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord, and to seek his will in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall hide me in his shelter, in the secret place of his dwelling shall he hide me and set me high upon a rock. Therefore will I offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness, I will sing and make music to the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The appointed psalm this evening, Numbers 24 and 5. You'll find them at the back of the book in the Psalter. Psalms 24 and 25. The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. The earth is the Lord's and all that fills it, the compass of the world and all who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and set it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, or who can rise up in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up their soul to an idol, nor sworn an oath to a lie. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord who is mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Glory to the pa- glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. <coughs> <coughs> Remember, Lord, your compassion and love. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame, but let the treacherous be shamed and frustrated. Make me to know your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation, for you have I hoped all the day long. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, but think on me in your goodness, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. Gracious and upright is the Lord, 
therefore shall he teach sinners in the way. He will guide the humble in doing right, and teach his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, be merciful to my sin, for it is great. <coughs> who are those who fear the Lord? Then will he teach in the way that they should choose. Their soul shall dwell at ease, and their offspring shall inherit the land. The hidden purpose of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever looking to the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am alone and brought very low. <clears throat> the sorrows of my heart have increased, O oh, bring me out of my distress. Look upon my adversity and misery, and forgive me all my sin. Look upon my enemies, for they are many, and they bear a violent hatred against me. O oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I have put my trust in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for my hope has been in you. Deliver Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love. Scrolling past our first reading to the Canticle of Song of God's Love, turning back in our books to evening prayer, Saturday. God's love was revealed among us, that we might live through Jesus. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this the love of God was revealed among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us <coughs> and sent his Son to be the expiation for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought also to love one another. For if we love one another, God abides in us, and God's love will be perfected in us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. God's love was revealed among us, so that we might live through Jesus. A reading from the Treatise on Spiritual Friendship by Elred of Rivo. Spiritual friendship should be desired not for consideration of any worldly advantage or for any extrinsic cause, but for the dignity of its own nature and the feelings of the human heart, so that its fruition and reward is nothing other than itself. That is why the Lord in the Gospel says, I have appointed you that you should go and bring forth fruit, that is, that you should love one another, for true friendship advances by perfecting itself, and the fruit is derived from experiencing the sweetness of that perfection. Thus, spiritual friendship among the righteous is born of a similarity in life, morals and pursuits. That is, it consists in mutual conformity in matters human and divine, united with generosity and charity. Have you forgotten that in the book of Proverbs it says, He that is a friend loves at all times. Saint Jerome also, as you may recall, says that friendship which can end was never true friendship. That friendship cannot endure without charity has been more than adequately established. Since then, in friendship, eternity blossoms, truth shines forth, and charity grows sweet. Consider whether you ought to separate the name of wisdom from these three things. And what does all this add up to, dare I say, of friendship? What John, the friend of Jesus, says of charity, namely that God is friendship. That would be unusual to be sure, nor does it have the sanction of the scriptures. And yet what is true of charity, I surely do not hesitate to grant to friendship, since those who abide in friendship abide in God and God in them. So to our first Bible reading from uh, Evening Prayer, 1 Samuel 13, from 19 <coughs> to 14, 15. So we're looking for the book of Samuel, which is about uh, eight books, nine books in Holy Scriptures. So it's in the Hebrew part of the uh, Holy Bible, if you've got both covenants, printed edition, history section. First book of Samuel, number one in the title of the book. Then we're looking for the large number 13 at the head of the paragraph in the margin there. That's the chapter number 13. And we're starting at verse 14, small number in the text, going on through to chapter 14, verse 15, if that makes sense. Scroll back if you're following electronically, and you'll find 1 Samuel 13, 19 following there. Now there was no blacksmith to be found throughout all the land of Israel, for the Philistines said the Hebrews must not make swords or spears for themselves. So all the Israelites went down to the Philistines to sharpen their plowshares, mattocks, axes, or sickles. The charge was two-thirds of a shekel for the plowshares, and for the mattocks one-third of a shekel for sharpening the axes and for setting the goads. So on the day of the battle, neither sword nor spear was to be found in the possession of any of the people with Saul and Jonathan, but Saul and his son Jonathan had them. 
Now the garrison of the Philistines had gone out to the pass of Michmash. One day Jonathan, son of Saul, said to the young men who carried his armour, Come, let us go over to the Philistine garrison on the other side. But he did not tell his father. Saul was staying in the outskirts of Gibeah under the pomegranate tree that is at Migron. The troops were, that were with him were about 600 men, along with Ahijah, son of Ahitab, Echabod's brother, son of Phinehas, Fihini, son of Eli, the priest of the Lord, in Shiloh, carrying an ephod. Now the people did not know that Jonathan had gone. In the past, by which Jonathan tried to go over to the Philistine garrison, there was a rocky crag on one side and a rocky crag on the other. The name of one was Bozes and the name of the other Senna. One crag rose on the north in front of Michmash, the other on the south in front of Geba. Jonathan said to the young man who carried his armour, Come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will act for us, for nothing can hinder the Lord from saving by many or by few. His armour-bearer said to him, Do all that your mind inclines to. I am with you. As your mind is, so is mine. Then Jonathan said, Now we will cross over to those men and will show ourselves to them. If they say to us, Wait until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place and we will not go up to them. <coughs> but if they say, Come up to us, then we will go up, for the Lord has given them into our hand. That will be the sign for us. So both of them showed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines, and the Philistines said, Look, Hebrews are coming out of the holes where they have hidden themselves. The men of the garrison hailed Jonathan and his armour-bearer, saying, Come up to us and we will show you something. Jonathan said to his armour-bearer, Come up after me, for the Lord has given them into the hand of Israel. Then Jonathan climbed up on his hands and feet, with his armour-bearer following after him. The Philistines fell before Jonathan, and his armour-bearer coming after him killed them. In that first slaughter, Jonathan and his armour-bearer killed about twenty men within an area of about half a furrow long in an acre of land. There was a panic in the camp, in the field, and among all the people. The garrison and even the raiders trembled, and the earth quaked, and it became a very great panic. Very extraordinary. <coughs> is it history? Is it metaphor? We're told in the first paragraph that um, the Philistines, who are obviously marauding and uh, have been so successful in their um, skirmishes with the Hebrew people, that they have become their overlords to the extent that they have deprived the uh, Hebrew people of any sharp edges. Um, the Hebrews have to go to the Philistines to get anything sharpened at a reasonably significant cost. I'm not quite sure how much a shekel is. I'm imagining it might be a day's wage or some such. So you're using, using most of your day's wage to sort your plowshare and your mattocks out. <coughs> um, so there's little or no way, worldly way, that they can wage war against the Philistines. You have all the sharpening at their disposal that they may require. There's just one sword for Saul and one sword for Jonathan. Jonathan then says, after we've been told that, we're then told that Jonathan decides he's going to go over and um, attack the Philistines on his own, well, or with just his armour bearer. There are only 600 people in the whole, amongst the whole of the Hebrew people ready to fight. And there's this a valley, he goes down, shows himself, and he says that if the Philistines invite us to go over, we'll go. And uh, if they don't, we won't. <clears throat> they do call him up. They crawl on, crawl on their hands and knees, remarkably. I love that detail. So they are exposed. The Philistines could have mown them down, just two or three, I don't know how many armour bearers, I'm assuming it's just Jonathan and one other, crawling on their hands and knees up to where the Philistines are camped. <coughs> and yet, somehow, in a tiny area, they're able to kill 20 people, which sends the Philistines into panic. Maybe the Philistines were just so confident, maybe they had become drunk, maybe they were just not really getting ready, as ready as they should have been for war, entirely uh, unprepared, maybe not didn't have their armour, they might not have had guards around the camp, who knows. But one way or another, Jonathan, with God's help, as Jonathan would have put it, as the writer suggests, he says, uh, it's the same to God, I'm trying to look where it says, it may be... Um, Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving by many <coughs> or by few. So we're not told there's any prayers beforehand. It just seems a bit rash. But is it a way of saying exactly that? It's an example in this extended narrative. The Lord can save by many or by few. Jonathan has demonstrated that two people have killed 20. And that sent the enemy into panic. And then we're told there's an earthquake. So uh, maybe for us today, we might think, well, there's only a few of us. Look at... Um, global warming, look at uh, 
the ecocide that humanity is causing and uh, our apparent death wish to destroy this little lump of rock we're hurting through space on, making it uninhabitable for ourselves. Surely there's nothing that I can do, my recycling, my turning down the heating by a degree, <coughs> so on and so forth, my getting my milk in bot glass bottles rather than, you know, all that stuff. Is it really worth the effort? Well, according to this story, God can save by as many or by a few. Um, is it really worth me writing to my MP or voting or signing that petition against this, that or the other that we disagree with? In God's name or because of my conscience? Yes, it is. Luke 23, 1-12 then is our next Bible reading. Scrolling onto it if we're following along online. Uh, turning to our Bibles, we're following in a printed edition. Luke is the third gospel. The gospels are open. The second covenant, the last third of the Bible. Matthew, Mark and then Luke. We're looking for the large number 23 at the head of the paragraph. That's the chapter number and the small numbers in the text 1 to 12. Luke 23 from verse 1. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean, and when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. So the assembly take Jesus to Pilate. They don't have the power under the peace of Rome to put anybody to death. So they require Pilate to uh, pass a death sentence on him. The uh, assembly, which includes the high priests, the scribes, those in the Jewish council, and I guess crowds who gathered that assembly. So it's possibly the, sort of the, the council, the word assembly could mean council, but it could also mean that broader group. So it's probably both. They take Jesus to Pilate. They say, He's perverted our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, saying that he is Messiah and king. <clears throat> Messiah is a challenge to the Jewish people. King is a challenge to Caesar. Because, uh, and therefore Pilate. So Pilate says, are you the king of the Jews? He answered, you say so. That's just an echo of what we've had earlier on, where the Jewish council say to Jesus, um, are you the Messiah? You say so. So by asking him, I don't know whether in the Hebrew it's sort of a statement, you are the Messiah, question mark. But to Jesus' response is, you say so by asking me, you're effectively asserting as I am. And uh, it's very clever. He's, it's not a, a denial or uh, an acceptance, confirmation. So Pilate says, I find no basis for an accusation. There is nothing in what Jesus has just said that requires the death penalty. <clears throat> But they go on, he stirs up the people, and that's what Pilate doesn't want to hear. He doesn't want to have a riot, because his job is to keep the peace, the peace of Rome. And uh, so his head's on the block, or his wrists are exposed to nails on the crucifix, uh, on the cross, if he allows uh, a riot to occur. So that really troubles him. All these things are lined up, they're exactly the things that Pilate should stand against. Forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor... True or not true, that's a question about the, the temple. That's probably something we could return to them. But uh, all these things are just set up ready for Pilate to say, OK, we must pay taxes. Only Caesar is king and God. We don't want the nation perverted. We don't want rioting. And another opt-out has been offered to Pilate. He's a Galilean. So he sends him to Herod. He was the puppet ruler in that part. So Pilate was looking after Jerusalem. Herod was, uh, was he Samaritan? But anyway, he is um, certainly placed there by the uh, Roman authorities to look after the Galilean portion of Samaria, or Syria. 
as the land was known then, it was the province of Syria under Rome. Why well, we've got when uh, Quirinius, Quirinius was governor of Syria at the time of Jesus' birth. And Herod mocks him, was hoping for a sign, doesn't get one. Jesus doesn't say anything. He gets a bit probably angry and cross and sends him back. But even with all this injustice and mockery, Pilate aiming to do the right thing, Herod just having a bit of fun, they become friends. But for that, they were enemies. So even when Jesus is being mocked and put to death, he brings people together, he reconciles. And uh, let us pray for those who are being mocked like this. Let us pray for those who are seeking to bring peace and are seeking to bring justice to Christians and those of other religions and, and ethnicities where there is disagreement. May they have the courage that Pilate lacked and uh, may friendships be formed that uh, make for stronger communities and places, pray especially for the Middle East and uh, Jerusalem today, where within and between denominations and ethnicities there are such challenges, and uh, may these cause friendships to blossom and flourish. Uh, to our response, we back in evening prayer on Saturday in ordinary time. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other, that glory may dwell in our land. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. The Song of Mary. Uh, the refrain isn't the standard run for Saturday evening, I don't think. Uh, common of religious faithful saints, I don't know, do look up in the book. Uh, if you are there, 29th of July, uh, Mary, Martha, Lazarus, Friends of Jesus. And you'll find direction there to the refrain. Otherwise, join in at My Soul Proclaims when we get to the main body of the canticle. In the heavenly kingdom, the blessed have their dwelling place and their rest for ever and ever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. <coughs> the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, <coughs> the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. In the heavenly kingdom, the blessed have their dwelling place and their rest forever and ever. Source of Sabbath, air of peace, comforter, advocate, three in one, one in three. As we come to you at the end of this day, we thank you for all those moments where we have experienced your presence and therefore your peace, where we have known your provision, and we thank you for them. If our day has been one of anxiety and challenge and difficulty, we pray that we will experience that peace and that rest as we pursue you, as you pursue us, that we may rest easy tonight and be restored and prepared and in good heart and mind for whatever the day may bring tomorrow. Release international prayers continue for Nigeria. Rightly so, we pray for communities in Plateau State, Nigeria, who have endured 11 days of attacks in April at the hands of the Fulani militants. 18 people were killed. And I reiterate and echo my prayer that rule of law would be established in that place, that those of all faiths and ethnicities may live safely, as they will, where they wish to, worshipping as they will, uh, <coughs> freely and in safety from Christian aid we pray for hospitable communities where all may belong the joint public issues team prayer for Ukraine includes the lines may all our human failings be transformed by your wonderful grace and goodness we ask this in the name of Christ the author of peace and sustainer of creation and we add our amen for all places where there is military brutality being experienced by the excluded to the poor we pray to you for those who are suffering in roads and elsewhere due to uh, climate disaster Turning to Suffolk Diocese Prayer Diary, we pray for our bishops, Martin and Mike, uh, Archdeacon Rich, our rural dean Josh. 
and Joe, who is lead clergy in Hadley with Laham and Shelley parishes. Pray for uh, him and all who work with them in that place as ministers and as ward and treasurer secretaries, others on the PCC community congregations. We pray that they will have the courage to speak truth to power. And we pray for all across the county involved in hospitals and hospices, staff, chaplains, patients, visitors, volunteers. We pray for private and NHS provision. And uh, we thank you for the hospice movement, praying especially that its view of the whole, of the whole care which I guess is an aspiration for those in the NHS and elsewhere. We pray that we as a community will recognise the need to vote, to fund, to pay our taxes, to get everybody to pay, not just those who deal with currency, that are relatively straightforward to tax, but those who have a notional value, the actual proper wealth, wealthy and elite in our country. Um, so people might be billionaires, but if you're... Uh, Worth is notional based on stocks and shares and futures. That's when you really have wealth. So we pray that there will be ways and means of getting at some of that wealth and money so that the majority uh, can have access to education and health, particularly health as we're talking about it here, but all those other aspects of life that are unaffordable to most of us <coughs> most of the time. We pray for people who have been badly affected by the climate crisis returning to that. We pray for those who have been forced out of their homes because... They can no longer grow the crops they need to feed their families. And that is the case around the world and maybe the case here in the not too far distant future. <coughs> we pray for those uh, who look after things across the team, administration and other aspects of our life. Across the 14 parishes, Geoffrey, our lay chair of the team council, Pedro, team treasurer, Carolyn, team administrator, Karen, team Community Choir Director, Jason, Team Organist, Philip, Team Tower Captain, and we thank you for them and all they do. We pray for their health, their relationships with their families, their faith, such as it is, if they have it, if they own it, uh, and if they don't, we thank God that they are prepared and to support and sustain our work. <coughs> we pray to increase and build our sense of self-worth and our spirituality, however, wherever we choose to express that. We thank you for them and the support their family and neighbours and friends and churches give them to enable them to fulfil those roles for the wider benefices, or the, the, the two benefices rather than just within their parish. And we pray for Edwina, going to live in a hospice, having recently moved to Halesworth. Sounds like it's uh, always a tragedy, but uh, change upon change. Pray for them, their family, friends and neighbours here and where they were before. We pray too for Felicity, Peter, Ron and Jean, Paul, Francis, Joan, Valerie, Carol, Graham, Richard, Anna, Margaret, Sheila, Adrian, Ginny, John and others we may know for whom life is different at the moment. Whether it's to do with uh, health, income, relationship, work, accommodation, we pray that you'll make provision. We thank for all the good in life of Jackie, John, Joyce, Di, Nikki. Julian, Bill, Pat, John, Eileen, and all others who've recently died, including those who've been, whose ashes have been laid to rest today. Those who, whose life has been cut short through sickness, violence, and accident, those that have taken their own lives. As we remember Jesus' friends, Martha, Mary, Lazarus, we remember all whose years mind falls at this time. <coughs> those who served you faithfully here, those we've known and loved and see no longer. Ask this God your promises, humanity, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. We pray for ourselves and all who mourn the loss of loved one or a change in life chances. We pray that we will hear your voice spoken as your through your incarnate mouth by the breath of your spirit, your inspired words. That that brings light in our darkness, order in our chaos. That fruitfulness will ensue in our lives. Lord, hear us, Lord, graciously. Hear us. Amen.
كان ربما ينص نور خشين جرى بهي أنا هاس ما بالهم يركم هاي خشي بني بعلى مس ما يكش تهو يكشلها مير نشوف بوك وسألها إن إيش خدير بفس ما مالي أنا استقاشة نبر ما مالي أنا سألها إن إيش خدير جت مس ما نهما أصنع هو خلاص ربما نص بلو هو خندلا قلي أنا شن سير ما إيش مسي ما أرى محل أصنع كلام تهو خني شدي ما فس ما ده هذي خد على شرط سندي ورا خش ملة غير مس ما فوز نجاس نظام تبر ما فضو في السنة إخلي ما شم زلي قتي ما تبه على شر سنة أكا تهو ما سني ركب ما فنا مش ما هنت الصلاة خدي في الرف بس ما عاد هني أركب ما له تبر ما فضو نوش نسله في شم زلي خلاص تعرف ما هن بشلوت وسفلنا تبر ما فضو مش عند هذا خاني أشي في الرف تام. God our Father, whose Son enjoyed the love of his friends Martha and Mary and Lazarus in learning, argument and hospitality, may we so rejoice in your love that the world may come to know the depths of your wisdom, the wonder of your compassion, and your power to bring life out of death. Through the merit of Jesus Christ, our friend and brother. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.